Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. So here we are once again. Thank you for joining me. This is going to be a little different. I'm going to call this Precursor to War. Now this will be probably in my social media playlist. It'll involve a more in-depth story about how and why the Facebook Wars of 2017 took place, and that's my name for it. It involves my departure from social media and my return. I touch on this maybe in some videos, maybe IMI and social media introduction video for the playlist. But I want to get this out of the way, so when I put out Facebook Wars of 2017, I don't have to have all this preamble in the beginning. So, if you don't know, um, for many years, I guess in total, it's 16 years or so, I had a girlfriend, became a fiance, for, out of those 16 years, 13 of them were fighting cancer, and in 2012, I released a book, I published my book, went to Comic-Con, had the best four days of my life, and it was the best of times, the worst of times, and... My fiance couldn't be there. She had to go for special treatments in another city. And I don't know how I got through it. And I once again want to thank all my friends and family who stuck by me for these near 20 years now, it feels like. Uh, I love you all and thank you for sticking it out with me. I could probably be insufferable at times. And thank you very much. So, it's October 2012, Comic-Con ends, and the second I get home, I disappear from social media. I decide to stay with my fiancé and just fight to the end with her, which she ultimately lost the battle. And I was devastated, destroyed myself, uh... I wasn't too there all together to begin with when you listen to my IMI podcast. And I describe, you know, I, I've had to build myself up and do lots of patchwork to course correct things in my life. And I've done very well, I believe. I'm proud of what I've become, who I've become. But look, in anybody's life, we all have our little, you know, problems and uh, situations that are not the same for everybody. We handle it differently. So could I have been stronger? Could I have been more social? Could I have? Yes, possibly, but it's maybe not who I am. And that question lingered for a while as I just wallowed in despair and darkness and self-destruction. And eventually I did whatever I could. I reached out. I grabbed all the literature I knew, online content, Stuck to my meditation again, the stuff that me and Michelle worked on, the promises I made, which are a foundation for wellness and the construct. So I'm building myself up, I'm getting better, I'm reevaluating things. It comes to a point where I'm better, I feel better, I could focus on work and separate my issues and work on them with baby steps, discipline myself again, build up the uh, skills and build on the tools I have to maintain a focus and a balance. So that took time. And again, thanks to my friends and close family who stuck by me, who don't need reasons and hold biases because I might not have gone to an event or I might have been there for certain things, and I don't blame you either. We're all complicated humans. 
But a question kept lingering as I started getting social with my close friends again, the closer family, uh, being able to control myself and not get emotionally upset. I talk about this with music. I'm going to do some music uh, podcasts and I have that introduction there. And one of my closest friends, one I consider a brother, um, I would say to him all the time, I'm ready, but I can't pull the trigger. I feel I'm ready. I'm doing what I need to do. I got it down enough and I just can't do it. I can't go onto Facebook and just have conversations. Maybe it's fearing what's coming. Um, talking about her passing away, uh, the struggle, what it did to me. Okay, fine. And there were other aspects that started getting revealed as I decided to treat it as a project. So I went back to uh, almost a scholarly way of doing it. I started writing stuff down, analyzing my reactions to things, what was the problem. And without going to insane detail, because I kept notes and wrote everything down, I would even take arguments I saw, put them in notepad, not interject, not put an emoji, because for five years, all I did was smiley face something, thumbs up and say happy birthday once in a while. So I start analyzing everything. I write down things. I take arguments I see online, and this is from everything. This is ranging from friends and family to debate groups to politic groups and uh, theists, atheist groups, science, everything. I knew right away that I would have a wheel of interest when I would cycle through them, and that's how I did it. So I started training myself on figuring out what's fake news and what's this and what's with real science and you know, how not to put these things in. As I started looking over everything and finding fallacies and working through the paragraphs and I realized what was holding me back was that I wasn't going to be able to be who I am, who I've always been. And I think maybe it's surprising for people to realize that I'm a strong atheist, in some cases an anti-theist, and that the causes that I find important changed. So this seemed to be part of what was holding me back. I knew I couldn't deal with the bullshit no more. Yes, there is a bias underlying things and that has to do with family and friends and we all get close to each other. We all love each other and that creates these situations But, reforging myself, I would come in with a focused, balanced view. I knew what I needed to do, and I formulated a plan. So, as I analyzed everything, I knew I would have a wheel of interest. I would go from topic to topic, touch on them, post something, and then start getting into being more social. But in the nine months or so I did this, so this is nine months of me just getting on Facebook every day, Twitter, looking at things, writing down. My impulse was to say something in this and I didn't say it in that, what I shied away from, what was annoying me, whatever. So over these in just nine months, and there's a couple of close friends I'm showing, I'm detailing everything. I'm showing them everything and I'm using them as a um a control in an experiment in in a way i value their honesty and truth over feelings that uh i value people who will say things that might hurt my feelings that i'd rather know the truth so you all have this in our circle of friends and i start detailing all the stuff and I start to notice a pattern and I started noticing the people in that pattern. So going into this right before I'm about to rejoin social media, I identify several problems. 
I identify those issues. I identify what they mean to me, where my biases are. I look at it from multiple angles. So I decide I'm going to just at first post my interest, go through my wheel of interest, never stay on one thing too much and just see how it goes. And I start doing little interjections. That was my goal, just to say hi to somebody. And if they ask questions, be honest. And I sent the uh, direct messages to almost everybody I could think of that was potentially going to be in this war because I knew several of the factors that were going to happen and they can only go a certain amount of ways. I was hoping for the best, but it didn't work out that way. People's beliefs and their feelings, they're hurt. They don't understand the psychological effects of these things, how it impacts the family members. And I'm not just talking about religion. I'm talking about fake news articles, propaganda, bullshit lies, and not done maliciously. This is, well, in some cases... So I see this general problem for nine months. I'm documenting it. I got, I know this person, family member, friend, uh, shared five full stories this week. This one did four. This one keeps repeating that one. Um, And I knew where most of the feedback would come from in the anti-religion stuff I was going to post and the science posting and in general. So that's the lead up in a sense. I'm trying to remember, but when I go back on these things, it brings up new things that I might've just pushed out of the way. So I'm coming off of, uh, reforging myself. I'm, I'm ready. I analyze, I take about nine months of analyzing why I'm not reacting. I can't pull the trick. I can't interact. I realize I have to be who I am. I have to be more interested in the truth than feelings. I know too much about certain aspects of the brain, the mind, how it works, human behavior. And to a certain extent, I'm not going to tolerate it no more. But in analyzing this, I knew I would have to keep my emotions in check focus so dm started going out teases would happen here and there and i mean teases as if they would post something to me or not to me it did happen but i'll get into that so public posts that people are posting or posts that go to their friends i would post mine some people would say things here and there and it was sort of just starting so there i am back into the social media world and The first thing that was evident was DMs and the teasing didn't help because the DMs I sent out were sometimes not even answered and in some cases were answered very kindly and understanding. And my point was to say, look, to some extent, don't like my stuff, don't share my stuff. Don't back me in anything. I know what I'm doing. I know the repercussions of my actions. I know what accountability is. You're going to get involved in this. If you do, just stay out of it. This is not your fight. And I tried to make that clear to some people. And to some other extent, I would tell the people I knew I had issues with. I would tell them how much I loved them, what they meant to me, and how... These things could be important. So in the beginning, I'm, this is a neutral thing. I'm playing it safe. I'm being a little bit more who I want to be in the true me. I'm not doing it in an insanely aggressive way. No anger. I have no biases. I love everybody. Yes, I have some issues and this and that. That's fine. I've got all this. I got all these papers, documents, and just. 
tallying up what is said, what is this and that. And about a week or two into it, a couple of things happened. Somebody posted directly onto my wall. Now, I've never posted on anybody's wall through this precursor throughout the end of the Facebook war of 2017, which led into 2018, possibly. Never have I posted on someone's wall, directly on their wall at all. But it was okay to do that to me. Anyway, and I made a comment. I thanked them for thinking about me and let them know that I don't hold these views because it was a religious post. And they were condescending, insulting, and basically told me they felt bad for me for the belief I hold that there is no God. And this fucking person, and it had to be pointed out to me because I was a little taken back. I mean, we kind of went through a, an important time of our lives together. And someone contacted me, a friend contacted me and said, do you know who this person is talking about? And I looked and I reread what that person posted on my wall and they mentioned the name. And he had said, oh, so-and-so, so-and-so, and -and -and so-and-so saw Philip's spirit. And this was a friend who passed away. I described this in my IMI podcast. And one of the people this person pointed out as evidence for proof was a dog. A fucking dog. Okay. So that doesn't go well, but I'm polite and nice. And I thank them for thinking about me. They give me some condescending bullshit. I tease them back a little bit. That starts a side thing that brews in the background. So at this point, getting to know everybody again. I'm showing everybody I'm out there. I'm okay. I think I'm doing well. I'm getting my shit together. But I value truth over feelings. And this might create some... um, controversy and uh, some arguments but know that the person behind the mic the person behind the keyboard i'm not i don't want to you know you're not the person or the it's your presence you're putting on the line that i'm saying and i'm talking about so we are set for this war to start brewing with little things here and there that are popping up that aren't causing too much trouble And after the first couple of weeks, it starts to get worse. And what I mean by that is I start seeing, I have a, I made a three stupid rule. Every time I see three stupid things on Facebook, I will then interject. First, I'll start teasing. It might be just an emoji, question mark, or, you know, like rubbing the chin and others might just be flat out ridicule if it gets to that point. So I have a, in the three super rules, like, you know, if you post three fake fucking news stories that are just riling up bullshit and causing that are more dangerous than fun or have just having fun and pushing people's buttons, which is fine. I'm going to say something. And if I see you three stupid posts about prayer and some fucking stupid belief you have, I'm going to tease and say something. Now, I'm not outright vicious and angry. That developed over time with certain people. But the progression really started when I decided to post a post about Pennsylvania's revealing of the diocese and they bring forth all these people and there was laid out the crimes of the Catholic Church all the way up to the third seat from the Pope and I admitted to crying that I couldn't take it was just it was something that I felt I and we as people dropped the ball on I never got into a situation in religion instructions when I did go but I had one weird moment And this whole thing never sat well with me. And it felt like I should have been speaking up for years about it. 
and I want to thank another friend for just questioning me and realizing that some things I treated aloof and I was not serious about are important, and this was one of them. And the responses I started getting were, why do you keep posting this shit? Now, at this point, I was documenting everything. So when this person says, why do you keep posting this shit? This is shit. No one of these people liked any of the other stories I posted. They didn't comment on them. They never acknowledged them. So because I did a wheel of interest and I did it smart and I didn't stay on the topic, I knew that I had posted two funny dog videos, two medical breakthrough videos, two um, scientific breakthroughs, and two anti-religious posts. And over the weeks, it was clear. No one gave a shit. No one, no one interacted. No one, there was no acknowledgement of it. And that's fine. It's fine. But when you're arguing with me and you're coming on to my post, and I don't post on your wall, this is public. When you're coming in and you're complaining about what I'm posting, don't say that's all I post. And for people who want to say that I'm toxic or whatever, no, you're delusional. You have cognitive problems. Go back. Get a research team. Get a detective. Go back to 2012. See the moment I left you, you left Facebook. It's documented. You can show screenshots. Show when I came back. Show the progression of this build up to a war. It was fucking nonsense. And every time I posted, no one came at me with a, a an argument that made sense. It was all hurt feelings. I believe this is how I feel, blah, 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 blah. I tried to explain to them in the beginning nicely, respect. You got to respect the person, respect their beliefs, respect their actions. Bullshit. Okay, there's a big fucking difference there. And I've explained this multiple times. There's a prevalence of fucking anti-intellectualism and Facebook is a cesspool for it in that sense. It works for aunt so-and-so and so-and-so and when I show their pictures and their kids and cousins, they know I've never even interacted with them. Although I give them the thumbs up and maybe the hard thing and, you know, I love them and I want them to do well. But there's no confrontation with me. There's no butting of heads. And But if you're going to come into something I post and start shitting on me, and all you can say is what happened, why are you mad at God and all this stuff. And I'm giving you a, an argument and I lay out my argument and you just don't, you don't address it. You would, you just start, I get attacked. First of all, as an atheist, I give no shits about a God. I have no anger towards something I don't believe in. So we can drop that right now, right now. So this is what started. This is what I start seeing. No one is ever seeing the wheel of interest, like what I would do. And I would stagger them. And I kept notes of it. I knew exactly what I posted that day. Three of this, three of that, three of this, three of that. And I kept track of what they were posting. So when you come into my thread and say, why you keep posting this shit, it was okay for you to post a uh, garbage propaganda Colin Kaepernick shit about him kneeling and fucking whine about Trump numerous fucking times post fake news articles multiple times but I can't have something I care about I, it, something can't mean that much to me because it hurts your fucking beliefs so fuck off okay I don't care who you are how close you are as a family member you want to come at me that way? You don't want to react to my DMs and me telling you how much I love you, what you meant meant to me, how much I miss you, and uh, apologizing for what my my uh, state of mind was. You want to hold grudges for all bullshit and not recognize it so plainly when you're responding to me. That's on you. And to this day, I hold no fucking grudge. I still love everybody. I know what human behavior is. I know how much they believed in something and how much it hurt them. But that wasn't my goal. My goal has never been to come out and fucking be triggered in anger. And it's hilarious when goofball fucking Captain Caveman of the internet 
keep attributing emotions to me and I'm sitting with friends and we're laughing our ass off laughing our ass off at people telling me, yo, you're so angry. No, address the question. You came into the thread or I came into your stupid post. I made a comment about something. You didn't address it. You just attacked my personality. You attacked my um, behaviors and attributed wrongfully uh, things that I was thinking or doing. But you never addressed when I posted something about the problem of evil or... uh, the big bang and what I think can come from nothing and a biogenesis and none of that mattered. All that mattered was stop insulting and disrespecting and offending my beliefs. I believe in this fucking monster from a book that's 3000 years ago. Or I believe some fucking political rhetoric and I'm just going to spam it on the fucking Facebook because, Hey, you know, there's no accountability. Fine, do it, right? but if I see it in the three times in a row, or three times in a short span, I'm going to comment. And your reaction to that comment is what steers me in the direction. Some of these engagements was totally polite and fun, and we're even closer friends than we were before. Closer family members than we were before. An understanding, and a, an understanding that I'm just going to be truthful, and yes, I'm going to be an asshole. But that's only because of how you're reacting. You want to have a pleasant conversation about um, Catholic, the priest raping children. I don't have to lose my shit. But what's important to me matters nothing to everybody. Because you've all been brainwashed and indoctrinated. You all have cognitive distortions and you just fucking spread it everywhere. Generation after generation. And I was done with it. I saw the blatant disregard for family members who go through fucking life with a big enough, hard enough struggle. And these beautiful, wonderful family members who I love dearly want to hold up a fucking Bible and use it as a shield. And they go, oh, no, honey, you know, it's okay. It's, he doesn't want you. He doesn't want to kill you for what you are. No, I don't believe that part of the Bible. Right? What does that do to the person? You have a family member. They love you. There's nothing you can do that will ever be bad. There's nothing you can do that will ever lower their love and value in, in your life. But you can't deep dig deep enough inside to realize that the fucking thing you use as a shield, the thing you're arguing about, the thing you're defending, is fucking sickening. It's a disgusting fucking system. What does that do? When you go to your fucking picnics and you take the pictures and you can tell from the pictures the sadness in people's eyes or whatever. And guess what? These people won't say nothing to you. They love you. They, they, they're so caring and you're such a good person to them. But don't for a second think that your beliefs are not dangerous. That they don't do things to people's minds and their cognitive functions. That cognitive dissonance doesn't come from this. The trigger for anxiety, stress, depression. Oh yeah, I love this person so much. He means the world to me. He means the world to me. But they're okay with believing in a fucking religion that wants me dead. Oh, it's okay. As an atheist, I go to 13 countries and get my head cut off. Right? That's fine. Let them mutilate fucking women's clitorises and men's genitalia. With the married children under fucking age. It's fine, right? It's not, not my problem. But right when it's in your backyard, churches, uh, fucking priests are being moved around. It's revealed as a big thing. And you want to tell me I'm posting shit. No, you posted shit. I got the fucking receipts. I know how many times you posted that stupid Colin Kaepernick fake fucking news article. How many fake shit that you, shit wars you started because you wanted to post a fucking someone burning a flag and it was a Photoshop edit that was laughable. But you didn't care. You didn't care when your family members begged you to fucking stop doing it. No. You know what you cared about? When I pointed it out. Right? I pointed it out. So, fine. I'm an asshole. I value truth over feelings. Anybody who is listening to this that's what you're going to get. 
And yes, I love everybody. I'm still compassionate and mo the most empathic person ever. But I've made a decision. And it's, tr it's hard. It's not easy for me. But I don't do it from a place of anger, hatred. None of that. I practice meditation. I consider myself a critical thinker. Yes, I understand I have biases. Yes, I knew them. I knew exactly what I was going to react to. I knew what was going to happen. So, it starts here, and this podcast will probably end here. This starts a war that started blocks, fucking reporting, and surprises. Because there were people who came into this thing who I had no... I didn't, they weren't in factored into the experiment. They weren't factored in and they blew my mind and I love them for it. And I'll detail that in the Facebook war, but this was the precursor. This was me finding a new path, recognizing I had to change that. What I've been through has shaped me to who I am. And it's not an anger at life thing. I'm not angry at a God. No. I am angry at myself a little bit that I felt I dropped the ball that although I did my best to help the friends and family members I could that I could have been more vocal I could have stood up more for people and friends and family members who were going through things and I did it in some extent there were family gatherings where I almost got into a fight with one of the family members and that's happened and Things like that, because I just won't tolerate shit. And this, this, the end of this will probably be one of the funny things, because as the it's going up and it's not totally bad yet, right? It's just, oh, Joe, you're an asshole. Stop being an asshole. Fine. People convince me to get in touch with my father, <laughs> and I do. We have a history, like any family I guess but it's a little more complicated and it's fun at first and during this process it's still going okay we're contacting each other we just discuss stupid things sometimes it'll be mail and because he, he lives here for a little bit and things of that nature what's going on is he seeing his grandkids and that type of thing while this is going on I'm actually on the phone with him and I'm posting a joke I wrote for him about the Rolling Stones. And I had seen an article and it posted a picture of brain damage could cause people to joke a lot. And my father's always telling jokes that people loved it. The family member, like, it was a hit as a post for the time. It was, and then I wrote a joke and I called my father and I told him the joke and he laughed, he liked it. And as it got heated up and bad, I called him. For, I called him. I don't know when it happened. In between, it was probably right before the war started. And um, he said to me, "Oh, what's going on? This and that. So and so said something on Facebook, and that was okay until he fucking insulted another family member and used the term." I didn't fucking like. And truth over feelings, I let him know. And that led to more questions. And finally asking him, you know, so you believe I'm going to burn in hell? Like your God has judged me. If I don't believe in him, I'm going to hell. And he couldn't answer until he said yes. And as much as I pleaded with him, Told him to and picture me as a baby, holding me in my arms. You're telling me you knew I was born with sin. And what happens with cognitive distortions and all these lies we tell ourselves, we can't face the fucking truth. He doubled down, he tripled down, and I had enough. And that's been the last I spoke to my father. Stop the bullshit, people. Your beliefs are fucking dangerous, okay? You want to go through life fucking willy-nilly, being a breeder, part of the fucking system, fine, you're good people, you're great people, I love you all, but I am not going to let bullshit 
come by me more than three times. I just nod anymore. I'll have fun with it. I'll try to tease a little bit. I don't get super triggered. I'm never super angry. As a matter of fact, I'm always stoned and I'm always meditating. So all these things that you use your intuition, because we're all intuition machines, you're all just go with the herd. You know, you got your fucking mentalities that are tribal, fine. And you got this belief that can't be questioned. Well, guess what? I don't give a fuck. I don't care about your beliefs or your feelings in that sense. I temper my respect and love of people in a way I'm comfortable with. I love all human beings at a base level. And don't kid yourself. You can say you love everybody equally, but the second you start learning and information is filled in, you start developing biases. There's no way around it. So, Yes, I love everybody at a base level. Once I get to know something about you that starts being revealing, I'm going to form an opinion, hopefully an informed opinion. And then respecting you and your beliefs become separate. And then respecting your actions are even more separate. So stop whining. Develop a thick skin. You're on the internet. You want to say something stupid, ridiculous? I have the right to ridicule it. My free speech is just as important as yours. So fucking block me, report me, ban me. God, your God is a fucking monster. Most of you, most of yours are. Your fucking books are ridiculous bullshit. You treat fucking belief in a God less valuable than you do buying a house or doing your taxes or going to the doctor. So keep playing your fucking games, keep fucking, you know, bullshitting yourself. However, I'm going to treat it differently. In the time I'm making this now, everything has settled down. The people who have stuck by me, they probably unfollow me, but stay friends. That's fine. Look, you don't want to tolerate the bullshit? Fine. I don't want to see that shit on my timeline. I gotcha. I'm even okay with the people who block me. I'm particularly happy that some blocked me, but I made the decision never to block anybody except for one person who reported me. It was a fucking idiot I made friends with in a video game. But bring anything. Insult me. Call me names. I don't care. doesn't hurt me. Insult my beliefs. Wah. Fucking nonsense. You know, people fucking go all over the place. What's wrong? What's wrong with today? Why? What's the problem? You know, what's this problem? This is what's to blame. You know what's to blame? Beliefs. This fucking thing that your intuition and your feelings are the fucking end of the journey. No. Sorry. Intuition and feelings are just the first steps on the path to truth. It requires discipline. Self-awareness. Introspection. We need to teach our kids the foundations of meditation and breathing, to become critical thinkers, to become inoculated to the nonsense. But keep doing what you're doing. Keep putting up bullshit. And when your logic is exposed and something is addressed, you don't address it in a civil, respectful manner. No, you just go for insulting and wah, wah, my feelings are hurt. This is the precursor to war. Next in this series, I will do a Facebook war of 2017. And we'll get into the blocks, the fucking potential uh, out of nowhere person or people that really made me really have fun. Never in all this is there an anger and hatred from me. This was all done as an experiment, as a new way of looking at things, of becoming a person I could be happy with, living with myself, to be stronger, a better person. You don't like it. I'm sorry. I still love you. And I hope the best for you.
So stay tuned in this line for Facebook wall. I'll try to get to it eventually. Stay healthy, everybody. I'll see you all next time.